Hi there gorgeous and a very happy drugstore December to you. I could not think of a better video to close out 2020 than to do a comparison of makeup trends from the 1920s side by side with the 2020s. So today I'm going to be showing you a full face, half and half of 1920s makeup on this side and 2020s makeup on this side. For those who are familiar with my channel, you've been here for a while and perhaps found me through the historically accurate makeup series that I do here on the channel. I am hoping to pick those back up again in 2021. And so it brought me so much joy to be able to create this video for you here today. And I feel like it's such an eye-opening look at how how trends really are cyclical. And if you happen to miss the 1920s video tutorial that I did, I think it was the first one that kicked off this series in its entirety. I'll have it linked for you below. I will tell you that that tutorial, looking back on it now, is more along the lines of the film star flapper kind of makeup. It wasn't the everyday woman makeup, and I realized that after researching the trends for this video. So I'm showing you what an everyday woman in 1920s would have worn on her face as compared to what we wear every day here in the 2020s. And I did run a survey on Instagram asking what trends you were participating in this past year. A lot of people said, I didn't wear any makeup. Well, I can't really work with that. I understand. But thankfully, there were a few people who said, I really liked this and this is how I wore my makeup. And it seems that a lot of us were into the very natural, fresh-faced approach, quick, easy-to-go kind of makeup. And so that is what I'm going to be showing you here today. And it's really amazing to see how similar the two sides are. So I really, truly hope that you will enjoy today's video. We'll kick things off in this look by talking about skincare. What's amazing is that if you look at the 1920s and you look at 2020, skincare was essential. It became the focus of our existence, I feel like this year. And then in 1920, it was the same way. Complexion was very important, a fresh, youthful emphasis on the skin type of trend was very popular. And so I'm going to go ahead and apply some skincare products here. I'm using my e.l.f. Illuminating Eye Cream. I'm also going to use the e.l.f. Daily Hydration Moisturizer. In 1920, they would use something called a foundation cream, which if you study what that is, it is akin to a modern day BB cream. It was something with color, but skincare benefits. So very similar to what we've all been gravitating to this year, surprisingly. So I'm going to use the same product on both sides of my face, and that is the NYX Bear With Me Tinted Skin Veil. Additionally, they did not use concealer in the 20s like we use today. So I am going to take a little bit more of that BB cream and apply it underneath the eye. They actually would use powder to help conceal underneath the eyes and rouge. It's really fascinating to me, but yes, they used blush to try and counterbalance dark circles underneath the eyes. We might try that a little bit later. And then on this side, I'm using the number seven Lift and Luminate Concealer to conceal those under eye circles. In the 1920s, face powder was very popular and it was used liberally, which to me, sounds like it's more of a mattified appearance as opposed to our modern day 2020 style where it's very dewy, radiant, glowing, youthful kind of skin. So I'm using the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder and I am going to apply it pretty liberally on this side to build it up a little bit more than I typically would. They also used powder to help conceal blemishes. Powder was more or less like a one fix all kind of thing. It, it was very loved in the 20s. 
And similar to what you see now, there were a lot of different powder colors available, which I'll talk more about here in a minute. Now on the 2020 side, I'm going to take a very light dusting of powder just to set the face but not pack it on like I did on the other side. Like I mentioned, they had a lot of different colors of powders available in the 1920s, and they would use some of them as a form of contouring. It wasn't called contouring, but that was essentially what they did. So I'm taking the Milani Silky Matte Sunlight, and I use this as a contour, and I'm going to use that with my fan brush here, and lightly sweep that down the cheekbone. Now they could have also used rouge like this. There was nothing that I could find specifically stating that, but it wouldn't be the first time that I've heard about that. I, I can't remember the era where they did that, but there was an era in the past 100 years where blush was used as a contour. And I wanna say it was the 80s actually, now that I'm really thinking about it. I am also going to apply that same level of contour on the 2020 side. I know some people skipped it this year, but there were still some of us who wore it, myself included, and I still did a full face quite often, if even just for myself, or <laughs> to jump on a phone call with someone. It was still relevant to me. We'll stop there with the face right now, and we'll move up to the eyes and focus on them for a little bit here. For the eyes, it's really fascinating if you study the 1920s compared to 2020, because they are still, again, very similar. I'm going to go ahead and apply an eyeshadow primer first. I'm using the Milani one, and I am not going to apply a primer on this eye, and I will tell you why here in one second. In the 1920s, eyeshadow was not really popular for everyday women on an everyday basis. It was more reserved for formal parties, formal occasions, and that would be when they would pull the eyeshadow out. So if you saw a woman in everyday life in the 1920s, her eye would probably be bare, and if she was wearing eyeshadow, it would be incredibly muted. So I'm not going to apply anything there. I'm Actually, what I may do, I did already apply some of the NYX Tinted Skin Veil over the top just to conceal the veins in my eyes. The other thing I will do is apply a little bit of my Wet n Wild Brulee eyeshadow simply because it will help to conceal those veins a little bit further and that's definitely muted <laughs> by doing that. One of the other things they did in this era is instead of using eyeshadow during the day, if they wanted a little bit of color and they still wanted to keep the look muted, they would use a dark face powder. So as an example, using the one that I used for contour, just a light dusting over the eye would also be a still 1920 looking eye. Not going to do that though, because I do want to keep it as authentic as possible here, and a majority of women did not do that. On this eye, I am going to take a neutral brown, something very cool toned. I'm not really sure what just yet. Okay, I'm going with a favorite here. This is ELF's Bite Size Eyeshadow Palette in Truffles, and I'm using this shade exclusively. Applying it all over the lid as a one eyeshadow kind of color, because I feel like that was the thing in 2020, was simplistic makeup, very easy, quick, fast type of application, something that wasn't as involved as it had been in previous years. And for me, using one color only on the eyes really helped them to not only stand out, but it was easy and it was fast. A little bit more of that and I'm going to start blending it up towards the brow bone here. By the way, brushes I'm using, because I get asked which brushes I'm using. First one that I used here was from Crown. This is their C510. That was what I used to first apply it on the lid. And the second one I'm using here is from Shop Miss A, the AOA Studio Brush in E129. This is part of their Pink Paw Paw set. I think it's like $10 total. And you get a really great amount of brushes. Great quality too. And I'm going back and blending the edges very simple, very easy look. The other thing I want to mention with the eyeshadow too before I forget is that it was used mainly for film stars of the 20s because black and white films, they really wanted their eyes to stand out. And I just know from studying black and white photography back when I first got into makeup that you do want to emphasize 
things in makeup more when you are doing black and white photography because it shows up better that way. So if you did a very natural face and you were doing black and white photography, it wouldn't come across as well as if you had really punched it up and done a lot more contrast. And so that's why film stars of the 20s really overemphasized things like the eyes and they had a really dark smoky eye or they had dark lips. It was to draw those features out. For the eyeliner, they did use eyeliner in the 20s. They usually used a brow pencil, believe it or not, and it was either brown or black. Eye pencils and me don't really get along with the way that they would have applied it in the 20s because the way that they did it was it was a very faint line along the natural lash line and that was it. And if they did do a little flick on the outer corner, it wasn't like a cat eye flick like we've become accustomed to. It wasn't overemphasized at all. It was very minor. And so I'm going to use eyeshadow instead. I had an eyeliner picked out, but I'm not really confident feeling because yeah, I just don't want to use it. So um, you can use an eyeliner because that would be what they used in the 20s. I'm going to use the dark brown from the e.l.f. palette. Taking an angled brush here, I am lightly going to go along the lash line with that. And the emphasis is really to darken the lash line, make the eyes stand out, but it, it shouldn't be really, really noticeable. And then like I mentioned, I'm going to do a small tail on the end there. It's not much. You really don't want to emphasize this too much and then smudge it a little bit more. I'm going to apply the same dark brown eyeshadow on the 2020 eye also because I found myself using eyeshadow as eyeliner more in 2020 as opposed to liquid eyeliners, gel eyeliners. This became my go-to medium for darkening the lash line and I just love it because it's easy to correct if you make a mistake. It's faster, I feel like and it looks better. I shouldn't say it looks better because, I mean, that's up to a person's interpretation, but it looks softer in my opinion. And we'll do a wing with this on the outer corner because that was another one of my go-tos this past year was had to have a wing. It really helps to emphasize the eyes and especially if you have downturned eyes like me, it draws them up. Now the foxy eye trend was another one that we saw pop up in 2020. I don't know how many people actually wore that on an everyday basis. I feel like it was one of those more fun kind of looks that you could do in your spare time or if you just wanted to play around with makeup, but I don't know if it was something that people did on an everyday basis. And so I'm just trying to go along the lines of what I know I did on an everyday basis. Brows. I think this is going to be the most definitive trend where you'll start to see the real difference between the 1920 side and the 2020 side because 1920 brows are very different from what we have traditionally been doing today. So on the 1920 side, I'm going to use the Soap and Glory Archery Pencil. Eyebrows in the 20s were very thin and long. There were two different ways that you could do it, and I'll show you pictures here as an example. Clara Bow did hers where they were very long but pointed down, and they gave a doe-eyed effect. Whereas in sharp contrast to her brows, if you look at Louise Brooks, hers were very thin but went straight across. Now, the everyday woman would not necessarily have plucked her brows as thinly as the film stars of the 1920s or the flappers they more likely would have made them a little bit thicker by comparison, so they weren't as pencil thin, which is good because I don't really feel like plucking my brows. Not like that anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to pencil them in very thinly, but I think today I want to do the downturned brow shape that Clara Bow did as opposed to that straight across. And so, I mean, they really sloped downwards. So a lot of emphasis down here. On the 2020 side, brows were more natural looking this year. They weren't as razor sharp as they had been in previous years. They definitely didn't have that blocked off sharpie look to them. And I found myself using more liquid brow style products. And this was one that I really, really loved 
over the course of this year and it's the L'Oreal Micro Ink Pen. So I use that to fill in my brows here and it's basically a way to give you a microblading type effect. It takes a little bit of practice, but the results with it are really nice. And then while it's still kind of wet there, I go back with a spoolie and brush through. For lashes, eyelash curlers were invented in 1923 by the Curlash Company if memory serves me right. So I am going to use an eyelash curler here to begin to curl the lashes. This is the one from Surat Beauty, by the way. I always get asked what it is when I use it in videos, and I love it because it's much bigger than a traditional eyelash curler. So if you have big lashes or big eyes and you struggle with getting all your lashes into one curler, this one does it beautifully. As opposed to now, mascara in the 1920s was not used to curl or volumize the lashes. It was meant to darken the lashes. Not tube, by the way. It was more like a cake type of consistency. I'll try and show you a picture here of it. It was just a black pan that you dipped the brush into and then you would apply it onto the lashes to darken the roots and make them stand out. So. Unfortunately, I don't have a product like that to use here as a comparison to what they would have used, but I'm going to use the Ulta Beauty Twisted Volume Mascara in the hopes to darken the lashes, not necessarily emphasize the volume or the length today. I'm applying mascara over here too, but I am going to apply a false eyelash in comparison to the 1920s eye. When I ran the survey question on Instagram to ask you what you felt like the most popular trends of the 2020s were. There were a lot of people who responded back and said, I really focused on my eyes this year. I really played them up because of the whole mask situation and I wanted a lot of emphasis on them and that makes sense. And it's really interesting to me to see the contrast from years previous to where we really played up the face. I mean, eyes were still a thing too, but the face had a lot of emphasis, whereas this year it took more of a back seat. And it's really fascinating to see how similar the trends are between the 1920s and the 2020s. A hundred year gap, but it still came back full circle. And so the lash that I applied here is from my lash line in the style Unapologetic. If you are interested in them, I'll have them linked for you below. The other thing that I did sporadically throughout the year, not all the time, but once in a while, I did do this. I took a little bit of eyeshadow and used it to contour the lower lash line. So I'll do that here. For the most part though, I kept the under eye area pretty clean. I think you saw that through most of my videos this past year and I feel like it opens my eyes more. But there were times when I took a little bit of eyeshadow, I'm taking this one again from the e.l.f. palette, and used that to just lightly go underneath the outer half of that lower lash line and it helps to emphasize the eyes a little bit, but not too much. Blush in the 1920s was matte in finish. It was not shimmery. It wasn't light enhancing. It was pretty flat. And it came in basically two colors, pink and orange, predominantly pink though. And they quite often would match their lipstick to their blush. That was a very popular trend that you saw in magazine articles from this time. And so I'm taking my lipstick here, which I'll be using in a few minutes. And this is from Revlon. It's in the shade Soft Silver Rose. I'm going to use that as my blush here. Maybe a little too shimmery, we'll see. I'm just tapping it in with my finger here. And I'm going to blend it like that also. What's also interesting about the blush application in the 1920s is they would also apply it directly underneath the brow bone. Yes, underneath, I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. And they would also apply it underneath the eyes as a way to color correct. I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to apply under the eyes because I don't really want to detract from what I've got going on here on the cheeks. And this is really pretty actually. I am going to take a little bit of that lipstick and I'm talking a small amount and I'll apply it underneath the brow bone to give a little bit of color there. This is such a unique concept. It's very similar to how we do highlight now underneath the brow bone. 
but with a little bit of color. And I can see that just by not having any eyeshadow on, that the emphasis, yes, the emphasis it gives there is simply beautiful. Yeah, I'm not really feeling applying it underneath my eyes. I mean, you can if you want to, but yeah, no. By comparison, on the 2020 side, the blush is a bit more luminous, has a highlighter mixed in with it, generally. And so I'm taking the Physician's Formula Rosé All Day Petal Glow Blush, and I'll apply that on the top of the cheek here. So that gives a very nice highlight to the face, but I'm going to add a little bit more color with the CoverGirl Instant Cheekbones and Refined Rose. I'll take a small amount of this and apply that over the top. Really just want to emphasize that healthy skin glow. Can you imagine what they would have said about highlighters in the 1920s? I know that matte was the trend, but it must it would have been really fun, I think, to use back then. And the last part of the face, lips. The most popular colors that you saw in the 1920s were shades like Poppy, Rose, Scarlet, Raspberry, Carmine, really vibrant shades. And so that's why I chose the Revlon one that I talked about earlier. Again, this is the shade Soft Silver Rose. So I'll apply that on the lips. There was no indication as to the finish, whether it was a more shine finish or a more matte finish. No really, no thing I could really find on that. But the Cupid's Bow was a very popular shape of the 1920s. And I'll show you a picture here so you can see what I'm talking about. It had a rosebud style to it. It was more of a doll-like look, really emphasized the top lip. And so that's what we'll do here. Actually, okay, cut that. Let's try this again. I am changing my mind on the lipstick. I already tried it with the Revlon one. I'm gonna cut it out of the video because it doesn't translate the shape that I'm trying to create well enough because the lipstick is so shiny. So I'm switching to a more bold shade and a more matte finish using Flower Beauty's Poppy Pout. And I'm hoping that this will showcase the Cupid's Bow shape a little bit better. Oh, that is so much better. Okay, it just was not translating with the other lipstick as well as what you see here. And you can see that it forms a heart. When the, the full lips are done, it forms this heart shape in the lips. And so you can start to see what it's doing there. And you want to avoid the outer corner of the lips completely. Do not fill in like we would traditionally do today. Go all the way down and fill in all the inner corners. You want it to have a dip in the lips there. With the 2020 side, I'm going to fill in my lips like normal. The shade that I found myself using over and over and over this past year is not a drugstore one, unfortunately. I'll have some dupes for you below in the description box in the event that you like this color and you wanna try something similar to it. That is a Max Cream Cup, you can see. I love this one. But I'll go ahead and fill in this side as I normally would and you can see the real difference between the 1920 side and the 2020 side. And that is a 1920s face in comparison to a 2020s face. I truly hope that you enjoyed this video because I thoroughly found so much joy in making it and putting it together for you. And I love historical makeup. I have a lot of ideas for 2021. If you have any that you'd like to share with me, feel free to do so below. Let me know what your favorite trend from the 1920s was. I think for me, it would have to be the lips. I love that lip shape. It's such a defining lip shape of the era. And it's not really one that we've seen come back in any eras since. It's really something that defines the 1920s. It would be great to see that lip shape come back though, because it really does have such a unique look to it. But anyway, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you for being here, for taking the time to watch, and look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for another video in Drugstore December.